welcome back to the channel. We are on part two, day two, of replacing the crank on this 03CR85. So, uh, ended up going to the shop today and they did have my stuff. So, I'll show you what I got. If you guys aren't uh, subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. Don't forget to smash the like button and come on back, check out what we got going every time we upload a video. So, all right guys, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so we got hot rods crankshaft, another vertex piston, and a set of crank bearings. And it does come with the seals. I might just end up popping the other ones out. That way I know there's new ones in there. I won't have to worry about it. I didn't get a gasket kit though because there's still a new one in there. And like I said before, I ended up using a little bit of oil and grease on everything. So should be good to go. So that's it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the engine now and uh, get things started. So I'm not going to waste any time getting this done. All right, so there it is. It's out. Let's start pulling it apart. Okay, so this is what has been found. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, you can definitely see in the bearing here. Look at that. Yikes. So a bearing must have came out of there. So I don't know if there was a piece in there and it shot up to the transfer port and then that's what ended up uh, destroying the cylinder or not the cylinder the uh, cylinder head and the piston there's this stuff here but that was already there if I remember correctly and then the other half I mean it's been hit before no doubt obviously from the last one so um, from the last time it went so I'm not sure if this bearing or if this uh, I don't know. I'm not sure why it did that. And I don't know if it was already missing a piece of the bearing. Or if there was a piece missing out of there already. I mean, I, I didn't know. It didn't look like it got hot before. You know what I'm saying? It didn't seem like there was any of this color down there before. And I didn't use a puller. And, uh, or I mean, an insulation tool. I, um... I used this bearing puller here and just put it together as tight as I could and then pushed on the crank end and then uh, was pulling so I would put it here and then I slipped the crank slipped the crank in and then pulled from here and here and pushed it down this way and so I don't, I, at first I, I did that on both sides. Well, I was kind of thinking, okay, well maybe it tweaked this here, but when I measure, when I measured both sides, um, I'm at like uh, 1.772 on the opposite side of the crank, or on the opposite side of the connecting bearing, connecting rod. And then I have uh, maybe one and a half thousandths difference, but it's tighter at the top. And if anything, I thought it would be tighter down here, pinching the bottom because of pushing it in like this. And it would, I don't think it would be to me though, I don't think it would tweak anything that much. Like, I don't see how it would tweak something that much. But I went ahead and ins I uh, ordered the installer anyways, because I'm not going to fool around this time. That way I know everything's done right. And to be honest, this bearing still feels good, but I got the bearings anyways. I'm not going to mess around. That one feels like it's got stuff in it. So either way... 
just going to clean everything up tonight and I got the installer overnighted so just ordered that about an hour or so ago and uh, they're going to bring that I'm going to get that tomorrow and be able to put the crank in right so I'll pop the bearings out do as much as I can tonight within a reasonable time frame and then uh, do the rest tomorrow all right let's try and get this bearing out Man, I should have had these other ones in the freezer already. Got new bearing or new uh, seals as well. So okay, so I got my new seals in, all greased up. Got my new bearings in, all balls bearings and seal kit. And all I did is I just heated up the case, heated up the case real good, and then. Uh, flipped it over and then just took a socket and and the old ones came out real easy and then uh, I already had the new ones in the freezer I separated them out of their container and put them in little Ziploc bags by themselves that way I could do one at a time and then when I popped one out I cleaned up the surface real quick went and grabbed the new one and then uh, it basically just fell right in the hole and then just let it cool down and it everything expands and contracts the way it should and it fits nice and tight so now the next step is to put the crank in <clears throat> well the crank I'm gonna go ahead and put on this side first and this is what I got today in the mail it is the Tusk crank puller installer tool Pretty simple to use. You have different adapters. You also have your kit here. These are the these are the rods to help you install it. I might have to take this clutch off. All right, so that's going to have to come off. Well, that gives me full access here. So it's got a little notch right here, which is where the set screw for this, I don't think it's a set screw, but.
All right, let's put this other case half on. We will need our gasket. Gonna put some grease back in these seals. All right, that looks good. Gonna wanna put a little bit of oil on the shaft of the crank. Let's help it slide into the bearing easier. All right, once again, we get our puller set up. First thing we want to do is take our collar and find the right lock nut. Then we take our puller shaft, install that. We can take our two rods so we get an even pull. Don't forget to line up your notch with the notch on the puller shaft. And make sure we're all set up, that our rod's out of the way. Make sure your gasket's lined up. Should be lined up by now because of the pins. Get the bolts back out. All right, just got done putting the Kickstarter gear back on. Go ahead and put the clutch back in. Stupid me, I busted this off, so. Went to a local shop, and yes, they had what I can't believe it. Pressure plate, CR85R, CR80, 90 through 07. Part number is 18-P1110. All right, let's put this thing in.
Well, maybe I'll put it on the back of this first. It's like that. <clears throat> Drop the clutch pack in. Let's get these lined up first. Always helps. And it didn't even matter. <laughs> What in the world is going on? It's causing problems. There we go. Put that back. All right. And make sure when you put this washer back on, you put the side that says out facing out and I was told that you can just zip this thing in tight and that's good enough and then this guy we can tighten down properly it's good to me 37 foot-pounds That's the thing with uh, this build is that, or this engine, is that the manual doesn't give a lot of torque specs at all. But you can go off of basic um, torque specs for bolt sizes and threads. So for this side, so let's go ahead and put this case side back on. You want to make sure that your, your clutch plunger is in there. I'm going to go ahead and soak up this oil here. So we're not spilling all over. Then once again, for safety measures, I'm going to put a little bit of grease back in here. One last wipe. <laughs> All right, let's put it on. Again, we'll hit this with some grease. Let's get our trusty box out that's got all of our bolts. Now on all the sleds these are, and on my CRF 250R has these same six millimeter by one thread pitch bolts and they're all like six foot pounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the flywheel and stator and spark trigger coil on. Gonna put some Loctite on these. We got two more for the spark trigger. We want to put our Woodruff key in.
I'm gonna get our flywheel. Now, you'll see this slot right there. Just slide it straight over the Woodruff key. Just line it up. Slide it over just like that. That's all buttoned up. The last thing to do is the well, we might want to wait on this cover here because I still have to put this on, and we'll do that on the bike. So, for now, let's flip it around and we'll put the top end on. Okay, so what I like to do is just get a little clean cup and I'll put my two stroke oil in there, and then that way I can dip parts in it as I'm putting it together or dip my finger in there if I need to. So we have another vertex piston, another vertex piston. <laughs> you want to make sure that you got correct ring end gap clearance and you just do that by taking this and sticking it on the inside of the cylinder. this this is a plus two. Oh, the magic of camera so I had to drive all the way back 35 minutes just to swap out the piston that they gave me because they gave me a 49 and a half piston so it's a two over and Got a Weisco. Weisco number 833M04750. That's the bore of this stock cylinder. So now you take your piston ring for use with iron, nickel ceramic coatings, Nicosil, electrofusion, and boron composite. Do not use in chrome plated cylinders. So that right there shows that chrome and nicosil are not the same material. It says four inches per inch of bore. We're looking at roughly two inches. Four thousandths per inch of bore. So you wanna, the gap is gonna be right here. So you wanna take your ring, squeeze it, slip it down in there, and then twist it. So we're looking at at least eight thousandths. And we got that. So let's go to see if we can fit eleven thousandths in there. Yep. Twelve, thirteen, let's go to fourteen. Nope. Thirteen. Nope. So it's probably twelve. Twelve thousandths, we need eight. Good to go. Okay, so now we take that out, take the cylinder off. All right, so I'm gonna install the circlips first. Then you want the arrow facing the exhaust. You want to take your bearing and dip it in two stroke. You may as well go ahead and install your ring. Then you take your pin. Dip that in oil as well. You 
want your ring gap on the intake side. I'm going to install the other circlip. Now we're ready for the cylinder gasket. To pop our cylinder on after we make sure that we get plenty of oil on the on the ring itself. All right, so you just want to line your gap up on the pin right here. And then just squeeze the ring. Go three steps of seven. That's fourteen right there. Twenty pounds for the cylinder head. Three steps as usual. All right, let's go put it in the bike. All right, first start up. 